Hey everybody, it's Mr. Fred. Once a week, I've decided to play a live game on ChessKid.com and throw it up on YouTube and throw it up on my website and just bring you a fun bonus video. Think of it as like a little, a little extra treat. Um, why are you playing on ChessKid.com, you might ask. Fred, Mr. Fred, you're a grown man. Well, the answer to that question is, A, it'll make me look really good. B, my opponents on ChessKid.com are going to make the same types of mistakes that you guys make. So the game will be much more instructive. And ultimately, that's what I'm really going for here. I'm hoping that, that these videos not only will be a little bit, a little bit funny, a little bit loopy, um, but they'll also have some instructional value. So we're going to click New Game, and we're going to see who is stepping up to the plate. Percy Jackson in the building. I'm pretty certain Joaquin is just wiling out right now. There was this kid, Percy Jackson, at a, at a chess tournament a bunch of us were at. He aborted. Couldn't take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Um... There was there was a kid named Percy Jackson at a chess tournament we were all at, and uh, your some of your classmates, primarily led by the one and only Joaquin, were were losing their minds. Percy, just 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 step up, man. Now's your time to shine. I'm gonna put you up on the YouTube. You're gonna live in infamy. You're you're already famous at PS217 if you don't even know it. How hilarious would that be if it's the same Percy Jackson? I wonder if he's going to get tired of aborting. I wonder if he will grow tired of this charade. I'm already tired of it, I'll tell you that. All right, I'm going to abort this time, Percy. What do you think about that? Let's give Percy a minute to find another game. Since he's a scaredy cat. He sees that 13-24, and he's, he's shook, as we say. All right, that's enough time. Hopefully Percy found a match and we someone else will pop up for us. Matching, matching, matching. So yeah, one of the challenges I have doing these things, oh God, Percy, you're killing, you're breaking my heart. Just do it, man, come on. Oh, Jesus. Sorry if I just was sacrilegious at all. Come on, somebody other than Percy. Somebody other than Percy. Anyways, um, uh, here we are. Mad Mad Max. So Mad Mad Max is, believe it or not, my arch nemesis on chesskid.com. He beat me once, and I then played him for hours just to beat him over and over again because I'm I can get psycho like that which I don't recommend for any of you. And the thing I really dislike about playing Mad Mad Max is he plays so fast. So the kind of mistakes he tends to make really aren't even that instructional. Um, but beggars can't be choosers. And it looks like we don't have a lot of choices tonight as to who, we, who we're going to play. So Mad Mad Max it is. Now, he has made, like, an instructional mistake already. He's playing what's called the Scandinavian Defense. And this is probably not the best line for him to play. Um, he brings He's bringing out his queen too early. And so look at this. I'm able to develop my knight towards the center. So developing your, your, your powerful pieces, your knights and your bishops, and then your rooks and your queen. That's one of our goals in the opening. And so I'm able to develop my knight and attack his queen at the same time. So he's forced to move the queen. We call that losing a tempo, or me gaining a tempo. Basically, I kind of get an extra move. So it's true that he does put me in check, but I can block with my light squared bishop, so I'm, I'm partially developing one of my pieces. I'm, I'm clearing out um, one of the pieces that needs to be developed for me to be able to castle king side. And the other disadvantage to queen e6, his last move, is that he's blocking in his light squared bishop and he's also blocking his e pawn from developing um, which is the only central pawn he has left he traded his d pawn and so it's going to be a little bit harder for him to develop his dark squared bishop 
and it's going to be harder for him to control the center. So I am going to, oops, okay, so what happened? I'm not even sure what happened. Oh, he put me in check, and, oh, and then he played queen d6. So um, think about that. So let's, let's look at this. So he goes, he goes from queen, queen takes d5, so he moves his queen once, moves his queen twice, queen e6 check, and then he moves his queen a third time. So he's only developed one piece, and he's already moved his queen three times. So this is a great example of moving a piece more than once before developing your other pieces. He should be getting his whole... I've already got both my knights involved and my bishop, and I'm ready to kingside castle. I'm, I have a huge lead in development over Mad Mad Max, who's playing like a madman. Um, so right now I'm tempted to play... I think I'm going to play d4. And the reason why I'm going to play d4 is because I want to prevent him from playing um, e5. I want to at least, or at least slow that down. So now I think I'm going to castle kingside. So as you can see, I'm just completing my development. All right, he's starting to play, you know, smarter development moves. Um, and so the only piece, the next piece that makes sense for me to develop is this dark squared bishop. But I'm looking at some other things. I'm looking at pushing the pawn and maybe putting some pressure on, on this knight. I don't think that gets me anywhere, though. I also have to be careful. If he plays knight here, he's double attacking this, this pawn, and it's kind of, it's a little tricky for me to, to comfortably defend. I could even just de develop my light squared bishop because it's not really doing much here. I guess it is breaking the pin if he decided to relocate his light squared bishop. Knight here even looks okay. Knight h4. So even though it's putting... Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I would love to put my, my dark squared bishop here and hit his queen. But he's got no protection. I'm definitely not going to play g3 in order to accomplish that because it weakens my king side dramatically, weakens my light squares. I want to keep these guys kind of in a row, at least for now. So how can I, how can I bring the fire? How can I make things a little bit uncomfortable for my, for my friend over here? You know what I like? I kind of like turning the tables. I like turning the tables on this guy. If I play knight here and hit his queen, right? Let's say he backs up to d7 so that he's protecting the c7 pawn. Preventing me from playing knight takes c7 and then forking his king and his rook. Then I can develop, then I'm kicking his queen off this diagonal and then I can develop bishop f4, which is where I really want to put that bishop. And then I'm double attacking the pawn. I'm creating a, I'm creating a nice little threat. I wonder how he defends it. It feels good. It feels good. I'm going to do it. So here we are. Classic Mad Mad Max playing too fast. And now I've completed the initial phase of my development. Okay, so he came up with a pretty creative defensive move. I'll give him that. I will give him some credit there. To be honest, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to tuck my bishop back. I don't want to trade. I'm, you know what? I'm a little... It's a, it's a little annoying that he might hit my knight. Okay, he didn't do that. That's good for me. That is definitely good for moi. For key moi. Now he's opening up... He's opening up this diagonal for his dark squared bishop. I'm going to push this pawn and... It, and dislodge the central knight. I'm also removing... This pawn is no longer a target. It's no longer available target. Okay, this was a blunder because I can take the knight and he can't just... If he takes back, it's a fair trade, but then boom, I take his other knight. And I'm going to be winning a piece for a pawn. So he just blundered. So, another, so look at this. 
So I'm high, I'm rated more, I'm, I'm rated higher than he is. And I'm about to have a significant advantage, right? And look how much time I've used. I've used almost half. Look how much he's used, 12 seconds. A lot of you guys do this, and the minute you slow down is the minute you start playing better chess. And that's also when chess starts to get a little bit more fun. All right, so now he's in trouble. And this whole game, everything, all my um, advantages, really mostly grew out of the fact that he brought his queen out too early. And that fact is going to continue to be a frustrating reality for him. So now I'm relocating my knight to e5, a nice central square, also attacking this weak c6 pawn and this f7 pawn. Maybe some tactics later on. And the only reason why I was able to do that is because his queen was sitting around ready to be attacked. Now I think I'm going to... What am I going to do? Um, I think I'm going to develop my... Uh... Hmm... If I bring my rook to c1, I'm dropping this pawn, but I'm putting some pressure here. If I bring my rook to e1, I like it. I'm going to do it. So I'm, th I'm threatening. I'm threatening bishop f. I'm threatening bishop f3 uh, now. Um because he can't block with bishop e4 because I take and win a piece because of the rook. But he came up with kind of a tricky move, which, to be honest, I overlooked because I'm probably playing a little bit too fast myself. I could just take... I could totally just take and say, like, forget about it. Hmm... I'm going to take. And now I got to be a little bit careful and decide what I want to do. I could play knight takes and then he takes this pawn. But I don't really have much of a follow-up. Then I could grab the other pawn and start winning a little bit of material. But I, I want to think bigger. I want to think big picture. Go big or go home. I even kind of like developing my bishop here. And then swinging in. Yeah, you know what? This is powerful. This is a good move. So notice how I'm not really obsessing about the fact that my pawn's hanging. He's certainly thinking about it. I'm, uh, like I, I know, unlike him, that development, peace activity, um, what else? Momentum, all these things wind up being way more important than, you know, winning a pawn. Like right now, his king can't castle anymore, and his king is blocking his dark squared bishop, right? So that was definitely a good thing for me. And now, what's my next move? How do I put more pressure on this guy? How do I bring the fire? How do I bring the fire? I got a lot going for me right now. My queen and my rook are bearing down on these files. My rook's opposite is king. I bet you there's some tactics. I bet you there are some tactics, and there definitely are. I think this might be a strong move. This is definitely a strong move. Hmm... Maybe, maybe if I take with the pawn, let's say he takes my knight, then I come down with queen check, 
he's forced to come to f6 is there a checkmate in there somewhere bishop check he could push his pawn you know what knight here looks very strong now oh but then he could push his pawn hmm what is the play it works it works baby I'm gonna show you how okay so he didn't he made the correct move he would have been in loads of trouble had he not done that now I'm wondering if I have anything interesting if there's anything interesting here you know what knight here I think threatens checkmate Oh baby, I'm about to bring a discovered checkmate into the building. Mother's running hide, go save your children. It's coming, who can see the checkmate? So I'm moving the knight out of the way to create... Okay, he just sacrifices his queen, which does nothing for him. Like, he probably didn't even see the checkmate, and he's just moving like a maniac because that's how mad mad max rolls that's how my boy rolls Ooh, is it a sacrifice is it a sacrifice actually that was so it was a trade because if he had taken with the king it would have been checkmate so it's not a sacrifice it's a trade but it's a favorable trade for me god i really want to end this game where is the finisher? Where is the Mortal Kombat finish him? Let's go with Queen down. Let's just keep it, keep it moving, keep it simple. Pop Mad Mad Max like he was a bursting pimple. That's right, I can rhyme people. Not only can I play chess, I can rhyme your pants off. Actually, I do not want anybody's pants to come off. Never mind, that was a terrible choice of words. Um, bishop, ta bishop check. So you got, I got to give Mad Max credit. The guy does not like to quit. Got to give him credit. He does not like to quit. Little discovered Chekarovsky. We're getting there. We're getting there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I tried to make it a little bit entertaining. Hopefully I didn't say anything I shouldn't have said. Everybody's pants are still on, that's for sure. And uh, we got a nice little result. We got a checkmate. So I don't want this video to run too long, otherwise I would review the game. But I kind of reviewed it as we played it. But the, what's So what are the most important things that we learned from this game? Don't bring your queen out too early. And don't move a piece more than once in the opening. You should be getting everybody involved. The only time you move a piece more than once in the opening is if you have a tactic. A tactic is a forcing set of moves, meaning your opponent doesn't have a choice, that's going to leave you with an advantage, either a material or a positional advantage. So it just got ugly, you know? He got himself into a bad position, and then it became easier to blunder. And notice how here... The material's almost even. I'm only going to be up a pawn. Um, but look at the difference in the position. My queen and my rook are centralized. I have better control of the center. Tons of pressure on his king. My development's complete. His pieces are kind of uncoordinated. His bishop and his rook are on their starting squares. He's about to lose his right to castle. His queen is kind of in no man's land. So this just goes to show you how important putting your pieces on the right squares are, how developing is important, how those opening moves that sometimes you guys rush through have huge ramifications for the rest of the game. This guy basically lost the game. When you're playing up somebody 
stronger than you, especially somebody of my strength. I mean, I'm not saying I'm crazy good, but I'm starting to get into that territory where if you make a, you know, a mistake early on, like there's going to be consequences against somebody of my playing ability. As soon as he played queen e6, as far as I'm concerned, he's behind the eight ball. And then when he played queen d6, that was really when he was starting to waste huge amounts of time. And it might not look like much. Like in this position, like it looks, you know, it looks fairly balanced. But as we saw, things quickly unraveled. Here he should have probably played a6 and kicked out my knight. It's probably what he should have done. So he had a little opportunity there that he missed. Um, and I'm not sure if I played this perfectly, but certainly we've learned from Mad Mad Max's mistakes. And also, do not play so fast. Good guy, you guys playing too fast. All right, I promised I wouldn't review this game, and here I am reviewing the whole game. So adios. Hope you enjoyed the fun video. See you on chesskid.com. See you at class.